it would literally just be to remember that if you're not going to share your story then you can actually be stopping that person from achieving that success stopping that person from taking that step stopping that person from just literally just stepping outside their comfort zone to Gen Z Talks Around the World for the latest episode, where we're going to be discussing the role and social responsibilities that an influencer has today. And joining us today is our youngest guest yet. He's from the UK and only 16 years of age. As a 15 year old, he was an award winning and best selling author. In 2017, he was ranked in the top 20 for the UK smartest children. In addition, he's also the founder of the Influencer Publishing House. He's an ambassador for Borg University Group and Borg Banking. Has recently signed a contract with First Point USA to go to America for a full academic and sports scholarship. I'm delighted to introduce Trey Sean Bensani. Welcome, Trey. Thank you so much for having me, Dan. I know I've probably missed a couple of things <laughs> um, off the CV. Um, I, you know, I, I've seen that you've got some other stuff, so maybe you can elaborate and what I've said and tell the audience a little bit about your journey so far and also what's been the key to your success as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so hi everyone. My name is Sean Mantami. As Dan said, I'm 16 years old. I'm a Amazon bestselling author, coach, ordinary speaker, mentor, publishing house owner of obviously Influence Publishing House, also a consultant for an investment bank and I'm also a trader as well. And pretty much what got me started upon this whole journey was actually for me, I lacked confidence and before obviously the whole personal development arena would be the best obviously place to grow it. And so in that way it gave me time to work on myself and since then I've gone on to host events. My very first event I actually hosted at uh, the club that I support called Arsenal. Um, so in that one was called I'm That Kid, Bridging the Gap Between Fathers and Sons, which was basically just like a call out to my stepfather because he was there but wasn't there he was there physically but not there mentally for us so that was just as a way to obviously put the call out for him but as well as actually having the inputs on others as well so that was definitely like an eye-opener and very impactful event for the attendees since then i've gone on to host events at virgin uh, metro bank and chelsea to name a few and definitely look forward to doing many more uh, once obviously lockdown dies down uh, once the lockdown restrictions are ease up and um, yeah, so then obviously I then got me into finances, which I think is definitely something that's so very important for people of all ages to get into, because obviously if you're able to teach it and actually make it fun, then it will be easier to grasp. And then since uh, obviously delving into that, I then also gone on to run my trading mastermind group where I teach people finances as well as how they can trade their way to success. Fantastic, well done Tracia. And Thank you. you mentioned the confidence part. Um, as a young person, confidence can be a bit fragile, take some time to build up. Um, how did you manage to overcome any confidence issues and to make such big steps so early on, you know, whilst you're still at school? What was the key to overcoming the confidence issues you had? Um, I would say that one of the, like, obviously, at the, the things that played a key role in, obviously, helping to develop that was definitely, like, my family, like, my mom, grandma, and my siblings, as well as coaches and mentors outside, because then they were able to constantly just help me to uh, reinstall those uh, positive and uplifting beliefs and try and get rid and replace those limiting ones, because then by doing so, it's constant sort of like a thing of, you not just like taking out and feeling like oh I've lost a piece of myself instead you're replacing it saying so that way you don't really realize that you've lost anything as much instead you're focusing on what you've gained so I definitely think that's one key thing and then also being into sports as well like I, like being a footballer there's no way you can be silent on the pitch so that definitely did push me to step up and I definitely think those are definitely like a few of the key factors as well as obviously being in public speaking like you can't be silent on the stage so then having my family there to support me and get on stage with me at times as well to encourage me to talk. And also my older sister, something that she always like just uh, repeated to me all constantly, consist consistently actually, whenever I'd get shy or inconfident when, whenever it came to getting, just getting to that point where I had to talk on stage, 
it would literally just be to remember that if you're not going to share your story then you can actually be stopping that person from achieving that success stopping that person from taking that step stopping that person from just literally just stepping outside their comfort zone so in as a result of you holding yourself back you're also holding others as well so instead just think of it as obviously you're doing it for yourself as well but then you're also doing it to inspire and impact others yeah i love it public speaking is one of gen z's skills that they really want to build up and i yeah. think it's as you said kind of almost like sharing the story and i think it's a really good way to develop the mindset to get over the fear in terms of sharing what you've got to benefit other people um, and have that in your mind when you're on stage the purpose the why so, absolutely uh, no, I really like that. And um, I've also noticed, Trey Sean, that you're, you're building your brand as an influencer. Um, and obviously, an influencer is growing in, um, you know, in status power in terms of how many people that can influence as a result of the growth of social media. But with that, obviously, there comes responsibilities. Mm um because obviously as you're building up the following and you're influencing how people act you've obviously got responsibility to act in a certain way so i just wonder what your thoughts are um first of all maybe we can start about the role of the of an influencer definitely i think that one of the main things that should come with being an influencer is constantly pitching out the same message and it can be obviously a struggle at times because then at times also you may feel like you're repeating yourself con constantly. So being able, like one thing that I cons consistently say is it's literally just about being able to replicate the same message and convey it in as many different ways as possible. Because like the main focus for me as I am all about like finances and that's able to delve into many, if not all areas of our lives. So being able to understand what your core message is and seeing how that's then applicable to different areas of your, of your life as well as others so in that way it's not like the thing of oh my gosh like what do i need to post today or like oh my gosh i'm running out of content like please something like crazy happened in my life <laughs> like it's literally just about seeing how you're able to replicate i'm not saying copy but seeing how you're able to utilize and adapt and also combine that with the teachings that you ha have in the today as opposed to what you didn't have in the past and let's say like something that i love to do is look up look back on different memories because then when you're able to obviously comment on those memories from a different perspective then it also could be like an eye opener for those followers, for those people who are interested in what you're doing. But then another thing that I would say definitely, it could be sometimes unseen when it comes to one of the unseen struggles is when it comes to supporting others as well. Because obviously if, like, let's say you have a friend, like a childhood friend that you've grown up with, you're pretty much talking to them almost every day. And all of a sudden like you, I won't say you go your separate ways, but what you're doing on social media don't collide. And it can definitely be quite tricky to also like share their stuff to your story if it's contradicting what you're all about. So let's say you're all about know, maybe listening to like inspirational talks, listening to Mozart and things like that. And they're on the completely upper end of the scale and they're into the completely opposite things and they're posting the completely opposite thing. Then it could be also a mismatch. So just about understanding how you're able to do things in uh, moderation as well. So in that way you're able to also show that support but not in a way so then you're contradicting what you're saying for your brand and i think that's definitely some of the things that are very key but often people struggle with as well yeah great answer and what been the benefits to you as an influencer you know i notice you're um a brand ambassador for borg banking group so obviously that's one of the benefits is the partnerships you can build what other benefits in addition to brands kind of joining and uh, wanting to join a uh, partner with you? Are there any other benefits that you've, you've experienced personally so far in your journey? Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely like a number of different ones. So one thing that obviously when you're able to position yourself in such a way, it's not like a thing of, oh, please, please choose me, choose me. And instead, it's simply, this is what I do. I think there's some ways that you can collaborate and constantly pushing that forward collaboration as opposed to can I, can I help you or things like that. So being open to collaborate, being able to collaborate and being able to collaborate. So in that way, it's a thing of two actual um, entities coming together as opposed to one helping the other one out. So in that something I'd definitely say is like important as a result of being an influencer and just seeing how you're able to obviously target others as well. 
but then another thing that has worked for me personally like is LinkedIn a lot and I'm like constantly pushing that forward for people of all ages as LinkedIn is like a great place obviously network get to connect with some awesome people like obviously that's where we, we, we met as well and literally like, just through LinkedIn I've had like loads of opportunities literally people who have paid me just to answer questions and the opportunities that come out of there are absolutely crazy and endless so it's literally just a matter of like what you're pitching and being able to pitch it in a way so that people are able to see that okay when I look up Trey Sean this is the things that he stands for this is the things that he does this is the things that he can provide us value on and then that way they know all about you and how they're able to collaborate with you as well okay so what are brands looking for when they look to partner with an influencer? What, what, what are the key things you can outline in terms of the values or your personality or character or, or other things? For someone who's looking maybe to go down that route as a, you know, a side income or main income, what kind of things should they look to be developing, you know, a young person? Absolutely. So obviously like for all the time seeing how you can improve your content, improve like your pitches, things like that. So something that I would definitely um, just encourage is like using Instagram shortcuts. So Instagram shortcuts is basically like an um, automated reply even. It's something that let's say, and let's say you're getting people to comment on maybe a certain word in your post. Let's say like for instance myself, I did a call out to my trading mastermind group and I put the outputs act in the comments. I'll be sure to get back to you and then an automatic message then goes out to them saying oh my gosh thank, hey thanks so much for see, commenting uh xyz here's what you can get involved here's what's going we're going to cover so in that way they're able to know like okay this it doesn't feel like this person is just on their own it feels like they've been in the industry for quite a while it feels like they have a team helping them because obviously not everyone does have not everyone would have that money to obviously invest in the team when they're first getting started so then by doing that, it sets you apart from the rest as well, because it's no longer a thing of, okay, this person may just be like a, the average 13 year old. Instead, it's like, okay, this person has things in place. They know what they want to do. And also reaching out to brands instead of begging them to come for you. So literally just having, once again, an automated message or just like a, um, a message that's already typed up rough, roughly, I guess, and you're able to edit it depending on who you're sending out to. So let's say you're trying to do a call out so you can I don't know, maybe get onto these people's YouTube channel so you can, like for something that I was going to do uh, previously was to uh, basically just interview people where they're able to obviously achieve certain things where they have a certain following. So in that way you're able to reach out to them, be like, okay, this is some things that I saw in, that we both do, these are some things that i really interested about and I think it would be great to have you on the show. And being able to say like, oh, please, can we just talk instead? Instead by telling them, okay, I'd love to interview for my show. It feels as though they're getting something out of it as well as you as well. So and by doing so, it's sort of like a give, give and a take, take as well. Saying so, it's a win-win scenario. Fantastic. And what platform do you, are you building your following on? Do you focus on one social media platform or do you spread yourself across, you know, two, three or four? What would you recommend, you know, what are you doing and what would you recommend as a result of your experience so far? Absolutely, yeah. So personally, I'm also focusing mainly on my Instagram currently. So like my LinkedIn, I've been able to grow that, I think, to around 6,000 followers. So I'm trying to do the same with my uh, Instagram, if not more. And generally, I would say, always like when you're doing a post, stuff like that, make sure you're posting it onto all these different social media platforms although obviously just focus on one thing because then when you're able to focus on that one thing and give it all your attention then it works out a lot easier and another thing is being able to then batch content as well because then being able to obviously say things to your drafts and things like that it's no longer a thing of oh my gosh i have no clue i or i forgot what i wanted to share today instead it's literally okay maybe i'm not i might not remember what i wanted to share today but instead i have something that's really cool that i can share and it's in my draft. So in that way, you constantly have something that you're then putting out and it's constantly reminding people, okay, this Chase Sean's post is really, really cool. Um, I can look out for it tomorrow, um, maybe at 6 p.m., tomorrow at 6 p.m., tomorrow at 6 p.m. So then as I saw people getting used to you posting and posting and posting, then they're going to be more inclined to like, they're going to be more inclined to comment, to get involved, to buy that course, do things like that. So literally just constantly reappearing on their mind. And that's something that I definitely always like reinforces as a result of 
at being on these different platforms because sometimes you could spread yourself too way too thin by like going on 101 platforms at once so being able to also give that attention to that one platform as well as like posting the content out to others as well fantastic so you've been building up your following on different platforms what do you want what positive impact do you want to make to the people who have followed your journey, your journey so far, and to the people who are gonna follow you in the future. What positive impact do you have in mind? What's your big goal, your big mission um, moving forward? Yeah, um, there's one upon many. So one big goal of mine is literally just to eradicate poverty through the means of financial education and trading, investing, and simply just reinforcing the whole um, financial education and just getting into it from as young as early, as I said earlier. And one of the many things that I want to also have an impact on now is literally just the mindset because then when you're able to, to get out of the mindset of constantly having to work for me and being able to make money work for you, then it's no longer a thing of, oh my gosh, I have to, I'm stuck in this job because I need the money. Instead, it's a thing of, okay, um, I may still want to work at this job by choice, but I don't have to. So in that way, you're able to be in the choice, you're able to do, be, do uh, anything that you choose to because you're able to have that sense of financial freedom as opposed to just financial security. So I made my trading mastermind, uh, trading mastermind group public recently. Um, I'm gonna be working on a couple of things. We'll see my, uh, my Instagram uh, specifically. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna be doing a couple of giveaways different like that so people can then get involved. As also when it comes to financial education and investing, people often charge these extortionate prices but then don't also take into consideration those who need it most. So I'm going to be doing a couple of giveaways and a couple of uh, basically just prizes where they're able to get involved in these courses to then take that financial goal to their financial gain, sorry, to the next level. Thanks a lot, Rachel. And um, we'll be speaking soon. Thanks. Thank you very much.